Good morning, Kingsley Community. Pastor Colleen Weirman here coming to you with another daily devotion for Monday, November 16th, 2020. Again, I'm using 40 Days of Community by Rick Warren. We are on day number three, and our theme is still, We're Compelled to Love God's Family. So remember, we had talked about, um, this is a segue in from the 40 Days of Purpose, <clears throat> Purpose Driven Life, Purpose Driven Life, 40 Days of Purpose, um, why we are here, what on earth are we here for. And so we're going to break out those five purposes, which are worship, fellowship, service, evangelism, and um, something else, <laughs> discipleship, I think. So we're compelled to love God's family. That is our theme for the next seven days. And the first one we went over was we are compelled to love God's family because God loves us. We are compelled to love God's family because God commands it. And today we are compelled to love God's family because it is how we love God. Because it is how we love God. <clears throat> so our scripture reading comes from 1 John 4, 20b. So that's the second half, <clears throat> the second half of the scripture. People who don't love other believers whom they have seen can't love God whom they have not seen. Okay, so go ahead and dig into 1 John 4, verse 20, and read um, 1 John 4, verse 1, through the end of whatever section that is, give you an idea of what the Apostle John is talking about. And then the writers write, we love God by loving others. So if you say you love God and you don't love the person sitting next to you or the neighbor next to you, how much do you really love God? Now again, we're not doormats and we don't let people abuse us and there are people that are not safe to be around. We have to put up boundaries, but we are commanded to love God and if we truly love God, we love others because that's how we show our love that we have for God, by loving others. So the writer writes, the believers around us are important to God, so they should be equally important to us. In fact, saying we love God but not loving other believers is like saying, I like you, but I don't like your wife. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> or I like you, but I don't like your husband. The Bible says, quote, in 1 John 4, 7, everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So I hear people um, talk about, you know, be kind to one another. Let's just learn to get along. It's not ever going to happen unless we love God. That is, that is who gives us the strength to love others. Because loving others, like Christ loved us, is got to be from a divine <laughs> area. The power of the Spirit in us is what compels us to love others because that shows how much we love God. The writers write, if we can't love the people sitting next to us in church or next to us at the cubicle at work, how can we claim to love God who is in heaven? The essence of love is not what we think or do or provide for others, but how much we give of ourselves. Ephesians 5.2 says, be full of love for others. Follow the example of Christ who loved you and gave himself to God as a sacrifice to take away your sins. And you might be saying, you know, Jesus didn't seem like he loved the Pharisees. Oh, he loved the Pharisees as much as he loved the prostitutes and the tax collectors. And it's just that the Pharisees didn't think they needed Jesus. They didn't need to love God. All they had to do was follow the rules and that would show their love for God. Now, being obedient to God definitely shows our love for God. But loving others also shows how much we love God. So if you follow the rules, the church rules, whatever those are, and there's a lot of traditions, but there's also a lot of doctrine, um, and there's a lot of beautiful um, tradition in churches. But if it comes between you loving your neighbor and um, doing a church tradition, um, like we got to have church only on Sundays. Well, some people work on Sundays. How do we reach them? It's good to have church. Sunday's always been a typical day. But how do we reach those that work on Sunday? Um, well, that's not my problem, some might say. Uh, yeah, it is your problem. How do we learn to love God by giving ourselves to others? So let's continue. 
Our love compels us to set aside our own needs in order to give ourselves extravagantly toward meeting the needs of the other believers in our small groups, in our congregations, in our communities around us. Now they're talking about church, but we also can be talking about work. Sometimes we have to not argue with someone about something, maybe state our opinion, and then, you know, if the person's so hostile, you know, just say, well, let's talk about this later. You know, you show love and that you don't get into a heated debate with someone and harm them verbally. That shows that you love God and that shows that you love others. But a lot of us just like to get right in people's faces, don't we? You know, I'm going to tell you something. If you ask someone who they voted for, shame on you. Shame on you. It's none of your business. And to assume when they don't tell you who they voted for, it's because they obviously voted for the other candidate you don't like. Shame on you. That is not your business. Now, what you can look up is how often they vote. That's public record, but not who they vote for. That is private business. So if you're asking and trying to pressure your friends by asking them, who'd you vote for? Who'd you vote for? Why won't you tell me? <laughs> or if someone voted for this person, they're an idiot. Really? Come on. Come on. How is that showing love? And these are people that are church people. How is that showing love of God for others? How do we show that we love God by attacking people? It's, you know, and I know you're tired of listening to the politics, so am I. And now we've got these new um, uh, orders from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, which is another, you know, kind of setback in this coronavirus. But we can still love God and we can still love others by putting the needs of others first. So how do we do that? Well, the writers write, we love God when we see each other the way God sees us. So when you're arguing with your neighbor, you can't stand that person or, oh, there's no way I could forgive them. I can't stand them. I, can't ha I hate them. I can't even look at them. You're not looking at them the way God looks at them and the way God sees them. This means we stop judging others according to appearance and start viewing them from a heavenly perspective. This Christ sight, as the writers write, allows us to see the things God sees, such as in John 4, when Jesus meets the woman at the well. The woman at the well was a Samaritan, and Jewish um, people did not have anything to do with Samaritans. In fact, the disciples wanted Jesus to walk around Samaria because Samaritans were um, part of the Israelite group, but they had intermarried with pagans, with um, Gentiles, and so the Jewish people were not supposed to have anything to do with them. That's where you get the whole um, Good Samaritan thing, and that's where you get the woman at the well. So, but Jesus goes, and he says, I have to go through Samaria, because he knew he had to meet this woman. And he says, Judges, judging by appearances, she was a woman with a long history of sin, rejected by her own people because of her past, and by the Jews because of her ethnicity, the Samaritan woman. But Jesus saw her true value and her desperate need, and he filled her with his living water. Filled her need. So instead of viewing people the way we, the world sees them, oh, you're a so-and-so supporter. Oh, you're a so-and-so supporter. I can't have anything to do with you. That's not what Jesus did. And if we love God the way we say we love God, then we have the power in us to love others. We love God when we become doers of the word and not merely hearers of the word. I mean, First John says, people who do not love their belief love other believers whom they have seen can't love God whom they have not seen. <laughs> are we just going to listen to that and go, wow, that's really good? <laughs> or are we going to put it into practice? We love God when we become doers of the word and not just hearers of the word. In fact, it is possible to diligently study the scriptures yet have no understanding of God's love. Well, we know that. Satan knows all about God's scriptures. He quoted it to Jesus in the 40 days of temptation in the desert. <laughs> so just because you know scripture inside and out um, doesn't mean you know how to love. And then they write, it's nearly impossible to sit in, in a church pew absorbing scripture for 30 years but doing little for those around you and still claim to love God. The Bible says in 1 John 2, 4 through 6, the man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Him is Jesus. Whoever claims to live in Jesus must walk as Jesus did. 
And finally, the Bible says we should show love whenever we have the opportunity, every chance we get. Were you aware that God is constantly placing people right in front of you so you can have these opportunities to demonstrate love? So the annoying person that is in front of you at the grocery store and has 500 items and you have two and they do not let you go in front of them, do you get angry with them? <laughs> do you go, you start looking at them going, really, do you need those chips, lady? <laughs> yeah, You know, what goes on in our heads? Um, what goes on in our heads is what's being given to us from our heart. So we really need to get these connected. And the only way we do that is to go back to the Word and follow the Word and be with God in the Word every day. When we get out of the Word every day, when we don't read our Bibles, when we don't do devotionals, when we stop going to church or we just say, oh, I'll watch the church service on Monday and then it becomes Tuesday and then it becomes Thursday and you say, well, there's another one on Sunday and then you miss that. I can tell you we black, we backslide. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, said that we can backslide in our faith. And he didn't say we can lose our faith. He said we can backslide in it, which means we go back to um, acting the way we did before we knew Jesus. And that's really not going to show the world that we love God by acting more like the world than we do like Jesus. So the Bible teaches, never tell your neighbors to wait until tomorrow if you can help them now. So if you know someone that's going to need some help this Christmas, um, a neighbor, you know, I know we're in COVID and we're in trying to stay away from people, but there's no reason why you can't drop off. Um, you know what I think is really cool? If you've got a neighbor and you know they can have candy and they got a bunch of kids, you ever see those big giant Whitman samplers of candy? I think those are the coolest things. And they're like, I don't know, 20 bucks, put a bow around it stick it outside their door and watch those kids go crazy. I think it's just wonderful that we could, um, maybe it's a gift card, mail them a gift card. You have an extra gift card to Meyer or whatever, um, mail it to them or put it in their mailbox and just say Merry Christmas from a neighbor. You don't have to identify yourself. What are we doing to help others um, st while still remaining safe? So a couple of questions to ponder. Uh, this is a little statement first. Knowing you will one day stand before God, here are some questions you need to consider. How will you explain those times when projects or things were more important to you than people? <laughs> I didn't write it. They did. <laughs> Yikes. Who do you need to start spending more time with? Safely, of course. And spending time with people, even though we can't physically see them, doesn't mean that we don't um, talk to them, call them, text them, FaceTime them. There's so many different technological ways that we can get a hold of people and, and write a letter for Pete's sakes. I mean, if you don't know technology, get their address, call them up, say, can I have your address? I'm sending out Christmas cards and then send them cards throughout the first of the year. Every, every week, send them a card or every month, send them a card. What do you need to do to cut out of your schedule to make it possible that you spend more time with people to show that you love God by loving them. And what sacrifices do you need to make? So remember our scripture again, 1 John 4, 20. People who don't love other believers whom they have seen can't love God whom they have not seen. What does the way you show love to others say about your love for God? If you are hard to get along with or you're bristly, there's people that are bristly, and there's a lot of people in the church that are bristly. Um, and a lot of times it has to do with because they've been hurt or they're in constant pain or they're experiencing something that's making them anxious. And when we're full of anxiety, we have a tendency to be, you know, some of us just can go dormant and not talk to people, but others can get kind of nasty or short. Um, when's the last time you prayed for that person? You don't even have to talk to them right away. If you notice that there's someone that's acting differently, just say a prayer for them. That shows God that you love them. And then, if they're willing, maybe they would meet with you or talk with you or just share what's going on in their lives. A lot of times people just need someone to listen. One way that we show that we love God um, is to listen to people. A lot of people don't want to listen. They have many things to say, but nobody wants to listen. So one way that we can show that we love God is by listening to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And then when we get into that long line at the grocery store, because everybody's grabbing their toilet paper, <laughs> how can we have a safe distance conversation with someone? And if nobody wants to talk, then you can quietly pray. 
bow your head and pray. And when they say, are you okay, sir? You can say, or are you okay, ma'am? Say, yeah, I'm just praying for the store and the people that work here and the managers and all of that. And then thank a manager, thank a cashier person. When's the last time you thank somebody in retail? Because they're not going to close. They're going to have to stay open. So, um, and, you know, con continue, if you if you can afford it, continue to eat um, through delivery because that's what keeps our local restaurants open. Many of them aren't going to make it if, if we continue with these closures um, for a long time coming. So we need to really support them. So I hope that this devotion was helpful. Again, we're going to be using this book for a while. Boom. I am starting a new sermon series called Incarnation uh, by Adam Hamilton. And if they have a devotion, I might grab it. Or I might just add pieces of it in our devotion here. Because, you know, God has a tendency to make all of this work together. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> so I will see you tomorrow. In the meantime, have a good day. Enjoy the little bit of snow we have. And um, spread the love of God. Let others know that you love God by loving others intentionally. So figure out how you're going to do that this day. And until then, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.